Well, these are the things that we're looking at. I, by the way, I did put Eagle Mountain Lake up here. You can see, and you guys remember this from 06 when we lost all that water. We had such a, a monster drought from 05 going into 06, and the water dropped just drastically. Lake Arlington, you could have walked across Lake Arlington. This was poor planning. Now, just because this year we're going to have a, a lot of water, does that mean that we're going to have no problem on the water supply? No, that's not true. So is there a water shortage? Yes. And I'll use their own numbers to prove that to you. They don't have a, a really workable water plan right now in place. And the reason for that is they counted on two sources of water that are not coming. The Marva D. Nichols Reservoir in Northeast Texas is a lake that Northeast Texas is fighting, 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 fighting not to have built. And they're winning. They're doing a pretty darn good job of it. And they have every right to fight it. It's not for them. And eminent domain will take their land. They have a wildlife preserve there. They like it the way it is. There are families that have been there nearly since the beginning of Texas. And here it is, we're saying to them, we want to knock everybody off this land so we here in North Texas who use more water than any other people in the state per person can keep using water the way we use it. Second thing is, and this is what I would do. If you're running short on water, sue Oklahoma. If Oklahoma, all of a sudden, southern Oklahoma was in a drought or whatever was going wrong because they didn't manage their supplies right, they came to Texas and said, oh, wait, 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 we want your water. Give it to us. He said, no, it's ours. We, we have stuff we want to do with it. Oh, yeah? Well, we'll sue you for it. It's what, it's what we've done. We went after a sovereign state's water. I'm not sure I would be as pleasing as Oklahoma has been through this process. Currently, we use in North Texas 100, well, sorry, 1.7 million acre feet of water. That's what we have available. Now, in 2060, we're forecast to need 3.3 million acre feet of water for North Texas. There is a plan in place to solve that. But I just gave you two parts of that plan that aren't going to happen. As of the, and by the way, those numbers are from the Texas Water Development Board. They're not my numbers. Those are the same numbers that they have to build their water plans off of at the Tarrant Regional Water District. The bottom line is, this year, this coming year, we hit the top of what we can provide for water, in theory. We'll probably have another year of good water because we're a little up. Next slide. All we really want is for them to be honest. If you are making an economic development project, say, don't lie to me. Don't treat me like I can't read a budget. Don't treat me like I don't realize that if you're putting up a condo, that's not for flood control. <laughs> I'm not sure how a condo and a marina are flood control, but that's how they sell it to us. They want us to, oh, that's flood control, and that's the reason we're doing it. It's just not true. Get back to what you're supposed to be doing. It's the number one killer every year from weather is flooding. There's, you hear about tornadoes. You hear about hurricanes. You hear about lightning. Bottom line is flooding kills more people than anything else that's weather-related, period. And we have done very little, especially in the past oh, 10 years, to solve the flooding problems that we have across Tarrant County. Let's just say Tarrant County. Forget the fact that these guys are spreading out across 13 counties and, and exerting their interest and pulling in all this money from all these other counties by providing them water. We're not doing what we need to be doing right here. Something that's going on in San Antonio, in El Paso, in the Pacific Northwest, in the southeast, in, uh, near Georgia, there's something that's called groundwater recharge. Texas, about seven years ago, passed a new law that allows water districts to deal with groundwater districts to put together these aquifer recharges. Everybody here has heard about the aquifers being drawn down because of the wells and, and the drilling. And, well, the fact is, there is a way to take the excess water like we have now. We have water, more than we need, it rains right now. We can shove that back down into the ground and recharge the aquifer. They are successfully doing it all across West Texas. They're successfully doing it across South Texas. They're successfully doing it across the Pacific Northwest. It works. The greatest part about it is we in North Texas have what is called a net zero rainfall effect. We rain typically, on an average year, we rain as much rain as we evaporate. So that means we count on years like this year. We count on years like this year to bring the lakes up and keep them at a level that we can use. But on the dry years, we're just in trouble. And if we have years like South Texas has had, where you had five, six, seven years in a row, we have no backup plan. The greatest part about this is once you stick it in that aquifer, it stays. It will not evaporate. It's not like having it in that, that top lake level where we're going to lose it. 
This is something we can do today, now, to start solving our water problem, and it is not in any of their water plans. I have no idea why. South Texas has been successful about it. I know the Star-Telegram has done a couple of articles about how far behind we are in water conservation in North Texas versus the rest of the state. They're right. But it's not just a, an issue of when you turn the tap on, we won't have the water. It's not just an issue of your boat can't get down from your dock anymore. It's an issue of fiscal growth. We will not be able to continue to grow as a community, as businesses, if we don't do something to address our water needs. If you don't believe me, take a look at Vegas, who has to actually ship in their water on trucks every day. You know the Bellagio? The big fountain you see out in front of the Bellagio? Every bit of that water comes from the Pacific Northwest. Every bit of it. They literally truck it in every day on trucks. Next slide. If we do what I was talking about, if we do the, the aquifer recharge, we will be able to draw that water up when we need it and put it into the lakes during the summer months and punch it down in, into the aquifers in the cooler months when the evaporation is less. So it is something that can be done and it could help us regulate those those lakes a lot better. I will tell you this, there is one lake that the TRWD has agreed will always be at a constant level, and that is the new lake downtown. <laughs> I wish I was joking, that's absolutely true. The new lake downtown will be at a constant level. That is <laughs> something that they have done. We do need to continue to use the surface pipelines that we have in place. We do need to uh, stop drilling drawdown during the droughts. And what that means is we need to stop allowing drilling into our aquifers in severe droughts. People first, and then the oil industry behind that. There's a, there's a fight there, and, I'm, and listen, I'm all about continuing to find our energy sources, but at the end of the day, if it comes down to me having a glass of water, get the glass of water. And we need to, again, pump the stored water from the aquifers when the lakes are low or when we need it. When it's time, we've had some forethought, we can put it in. And it's not as if this is a plan that's hard to put in place. Certainly we could do it for less than a billion dollars. I'm fairly confident of that. <coughs> Next slide. Focus, focus, focus. This is what he and I have talked about again and again and again. They've just lost their focus. Are they doing it because it's the wink, wink, nudge, nudge, good old boys network? Don't know. I don't even care at this point. I really don't. The fact is they just need to put their focus back where it belongs. Maybe they started down this path with good intentions. It is absolutely possible that when you look at something that is this exciting and this beautiful layout that they had and somebody said, this would be a great idea if we use this water, and then, look, fine, I get it. You get caught up in something like that, but at the end of the day, they've forgotten to do what they were supposed to do, and that was provide us with water and flood control. So we need to make sure that we're meeting our future needs, and we need to stop, stop, stop using the water board for economic development. That is not what they're there for. So if you think you want economic development, I would suggest I gave you two really good examples of what the private sector does, and I would suggest the private sector always does it better. Because their example is they need to make money to keep going. They need to be successful. It needs to work. It needs to actually have a balanced budget. In this case, we'll just tax you some more. That's why you can start at $360 million and go to a billion in less than a decade in future dollars. Next slide. What can you do? You can vote. You can absolutely vote. If you are in the water district, vote. If you wonder if you're in the water district, go to TarrantVotes.com. That is our website. There is a map there that shows you exactly where the water district is. You can zoom down to your street and see whether or not you're in it or out of it. But I will tell you whether you are in the district and can vote or not, you pay the district. Every drop of water you get in this county comes from the Tarrant Regional Water District. They, uh, they bellow on a regular basis. We have not raised taxes in years. That's true. That is absolutely true. They do, however, keep raising the water rates. So it's kind of a, a backdoor tax, isn't it? So ladies and gentlemen, I would ask that you please get out and vote. The interesting thing also about this race is you can vote twice. So when you see my name and his name next to each other, we are number two and number three on the ballot, Vote for us both. Right. You have to vote for us both. And that is how we get on board. And it'll say vote vote for two below and, and we will. That is my presentation. I appreciate you letting me have some time to do it. And I